Okay. I think we're going to take her, right? Yeah, we're going to take Okay, so she hurt her foot. She's visibly struggling here. She's got a little girl. So we're going to take them and escort them because she's, it's, it's a pretty tough walk. Hola. Hola, niña. Hola. ¿Cómo está? Caliente, sí. Sí. ¿De dónde eres? ¿Qué? ¿De dónde eres? El Salvador. So they're El Salvadorians. Mostly family units here, as you can see. And we're going to take her back uh, with this little girl. So she has a little girl with her. Sure. Why did they leave El Salvador? Amiga, ¿cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo? Her name is Yesenia. Yesenia. Okay. How many years old is Yesenia? She's 25 years old. 25? How old's her daughter? How many years old is your daughter? Three. Three? Three. Three-year-old daughter. And then why did they leave? Why did they leave from El Salvador? For the father? For the father? ¿Dónde vive su papá? O él vive en El Salvador. Ok, so they came over here because of the dad. He's in El Salvador. ¿Qué es lo que pasó con el papá? Ok, so basically what happened is that they got divorced and he wanted to kill her. Oh, ok, so she was in El Salvador with the, the dad of, of this little girl mm -hmm. and apparently the dad threatened to kill her, wanted to kill her, they got divorced, and so she's now coming over here to protect her and her daughter. ¿Quién te espera acá en Estados Unidos? Papá. ¿Tus papás? Her parents are over here in the United States. Where, where, ¿Dónde viven her ellos? Her parents are in the United States. ¿Dónde? Mi papá vive en Virginia, mi mamá vive en Nashville. Okay, so her dad lives in Virginia. And her mom lives in Nashville. Okay, her dad lives in Virginia. Her mom lives in Nashville. She's in Nashville? going to Nashville with her mom. And again, días de camino? How many days have they been traveling? Yeah, how many days have she been traveling? ¿Cuánto? About 16 days. About 16 days she's been traveling. 25-year-old woman. Jacena is her name. She hurt her foot, so we're transporting her and her daughter. ¿Cómo te las ¿Qué es lo que hicieron los policías? Los siguieron. Oh, okay. So the Mexican police was chasing them. And as they were coming down, ¿se caeron en el barranco del río? Mexican police were chasing them. Okay, so they were being chased by Mexican police. They're being chased by Mexican and, police. And uh, they fell into a ditch as they were trying to get away. And they fell into a ditch as they were trying to get away. And that's how she, that's how she hurt her foot. That's how she hurt her foot. When we came across her, she was limping. She had a walking stick. That little girl with her is three years old. She tells us that she's from El Salvador. Her and the dad of this little girl here got divorced and he wanted to kill her, so she left. 16 days she's been traveling to get into the US with her young daughter and she was being chased by Mexican police and they fell into a ditch and that's how she hurt her foot as they were trying to cross the river. And so now we are helping them get to the border patrol so that they can be processed. Again, um, because she's not just coming over here for a better life, you know, to work. Uh, she probably has a decent asylum claim. I, I don't want to fully make that assumption, but if she got a divorce and the husband's trying to kill her, it's a little bit different than she wants to come here to work. Uh, so we'll see, you know, the judge has to make that determination as to what she can do. She's little three and she's three years old. She's very sweet, very sweet little girl. Um, and that's what we, we're seeing out there with the group. There's little kids. She's three years old, you know? And it's, it's, it is a humane and a humanitarian crisis and they're trying to do as much as they can to make sure that these people are safe. And in a humane way, and this is, this is a lot to take in, it's a lot to take in.
Um, again, if you guys are just now joining us, we are in the Rio Grande Valley sector. We are in the busiest sector for apprehensions in the southwestern border here in Texas. We've seen over 440,000 apprehensions year to date in this sector, which is a couple of different counties, but it does include Hidalgo County and uh, it does include McAllen, which we know has had, you know, do you, we can put your bag here. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Uh, we know that that has had a steady influx of people as well. And so, you know, when they're coming through here into this area, they're coming across the Rio. It's about a mile that way. And they're coming across the Rio and then they, they want to be apprehended. But this area of the Rio is extremely, extremely deep and swift and it is full on Rio Grande. And so I asked him how they get across and he said, well, the coyotes will put them in rafts and they come across in a raft. So these people we just, um, we just encountered on the trails back here that uh, basically they, they know that, that the police are gonna be out there. They know that Border Patrol is gonna be out there. They know they're, they're gonna be found for the most part. And they know that they're gonna be processed and that's what they want because like for example, this woman, she's from El Salvador. She has a mother and a father in the States. Her dad is in Virginia and her mother is in Nashville. And so she's meeting up with her mother in Nashville. And the reason she tells us she's leaving El Salvador is because she divorced this little girl's dad and the dad was, was threatening to kill her. Another large group coming from the west side. Oh wow! Okay, let so me. We're gonna have to move to the west side now because okay. most likely it's gonna be major to the right now. Okay, so this is a group now coming from the west side. So we're gonna drop her off, and we're gonna head to the west side here um, as well. So we are we are uh, making our way around here, and so we are back to the baseball fields where these people are. Uh, getting, they're doing the the bare minimum, you know, the bare minimum here to get them into the the processing facilities. So right now, they have paperwork with their identification, um, and they basically just have the clothes on their back and whatever they traveled with. Again, this this woman Jacena here that we're dropping off. Adios, niña. Adios, adios. So she she's 25 and her daughter's three and she hurt her foot because Mexican police were chasing her and um, they ended up falling in a ditch and she hurt her foot. So we were escorting her back. Um, the little girl uh, is her daughter and she, the, the Senna tells us that she was divorcing, divorced the dad of this little girl and the dad was threatening to kill her and that's why they left. So they left because, because she was in fear of her life um, and her daughter. So, so now they're here with Border Patrol, they'll take care of them. Uh, Sarge and I are gonna go back out, we're gonna go to the west side. There's another large group coming in from that direction. Um, so we're gonna head over on that side as well. Um, let me flip this back around here. So there, Jacena, she's uh, visibly limping, obviously. Again, she's been on her trek for 16 days, over two weeks, she's been traveling. Um, and so it looks like I don't know if she knows this group, but she stopped and is, is talking with them. So, again, she's 25 years old from El Salvador with a three-year-old daughter. Uh, left because the dad of the little girl was threatening to kill the 25-year-old woman. Um, so she's meeting up with her family. She has family in the States. She has a mother in Nashville that she's going to be with. Her dad lives in Virginia. So that's what we just learned um, from that from that little stop and now we're gonna head to the west side. West side? Yes. Okay, we're gonna head on the, the west side. There was another large group coming through, so we're going. Here we go. Sorry, it's a 